Hi, and welcome to week two, Understanding Old Testament Narrative. I'm Dr. Brian Babcock, and, and welcome to our second week where we are exploring how to interpret the Old Testament, and we're doing that by looking at genres. And I'm trying to see if we can... There we go. Uh, change the slide. So our goals this week are to discuss components of a methodology for the interpretation of biblical narrative texts. So to do that, we're going to need to unpack a bit about uh, what is Old Testament narrative. And we'll do that through our reading in Klein. We're also going to explain the historical context uh, and author's intended original meaning of a biblical narrative passage. And uh, I feel that context is one of the most important things that you can gain this semester when interpreting the Old Testament, but also the New Testament. So we'll spend a great deal of time talking about what is the context uh, behind a given passage. And then to identify ministry applications based upon the exegetical meaning of a narrative text. And finally, to describe a theological position identified in Genesis. So this week we have two assignments and a discussion group. So we have three different things we'll be doing. The first is to explore literary context. And for that, after reading Klein chapter 7... Uh, you're going to use the provided document to outline the five domains of the circle of context uh, as put forward in Klein. Once you've uh, basically told me what did the reading teach you, you're then going to discuss the key features of each domain and why they're important and how an interpreter of the Bible would incorporate these features in the study of a biblical passage. Now, a great way to do that on your worksheet would be to give me some examples uh, of a biblical passage and how context uh, comes into play, or at least each of these five domains of the circle of context might come into play into your interpretation. And then finally, I want you to add a conclusion with your reflective comments on the effectiveness of Klein's circle of context. Uh, as with all of our assignments, I want you to use biblical quotes, I want you to engage with the reading, and I want you to provide your own analysis. And we talked about that in week one, uh, and every assignment, at least in the beginning of the course, I'm going to remind you that this is more than just your own understanding or your own analysis. I want outside research, I want engagement with the reading, and I want engagement with biblical passages. So our second assignment is a vlog or a video blog, uh, or you could do an essay. Uh, but I want you to create a six to eight minute video blog or a three page full essay with formal documentation uh, on something that we're going, or on a passage that we're going to look at. So after reading Klein's chapter seven, I want you to create a two-part video blog. The first half of the vlog or essay should explain why understanding the historical context or background of a passage is important and the principles for conducting this type of study. So the first half is going to set this up. It's going to be the how do you do a historical cultural background analysis? What are the steps? And then I want you to show me those steps in action by either well, by, by doing one of these five passages, either Genesis chapters 37 to 50, Judges chapter 6 to 9, 2 Kings 18 and 19, Ruth chapters 1 to 4, or Jonah chapters 1 to 4. As with all of our assignments, again, I want engagement with the Bible, I want engagement with the reading, and I want your own analysis. And be sure to add a conclusion summarizing what you've personally learned. Now, for this vlog or essay, you can use Panopto uh, or any method to create a video, video blog, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you've never done a vlog, then you might want to look at the Panopto instructions that are under your course resources. 
So we have a vlog, we have a um, worksheet, and then we also have a discussion post uh, looking at how do you take a passage and create a theological position. Now for this assignment, we're going to look at Genesis 1 verse 28 which reads, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and every living creature that moves on the ground. Now, what does this passage mean theologically to us today? Does it mean that, that we should rule over the earth like, like a king? Does it mean we should rule over the earth like a steward? Does it mean that we should rape and pillage the resources because God gave them to us? What exactly does it mean? And this be fruitful and increase in number, does that mean that we're supposed to have as many children as possible? I mean, how do we interpret this passage theologically? So after reading Klein's section on word meaning, and after reading Genesis 1 and 2 in context, and after reading the chapter that I wrote, Be Fruitful and Increase in Number in your reading assignments, I want you to create a one-page, 250-word post discussing your understanding of the theological meaning of this passage. Be sure to include a study of key words in Genesis 1 like fruitful, subdue, image, and likeness. Also examine whether this passage is a command for us today and how this passage is later understood in Scripture. Because this, all Scripture is, is congruent and consistent. Therefore, if this passage is interpreted somewhere else in the Bible, then it should be telling us something that God has to say about this passage for us. At the end of the post, offer at least one application in a ministry setting. And then for your responses to other students, I want you to engage with somebody who has a different view than you do and create a dialogue of at least two responses back and forth, exploring how your videos or your views, sorry, are similar or different. Thanks uh, for watching and thanks for all your hard work th this semester. Feel free to call me or email me with questions uh, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with.